Good. Hey, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoying the time here at DerbyCon. Um, we're going to talk about my BFF today. Uh, Adam, come on up. I'm going to talk about you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, my BFF is a tool I wrote. Uh, probably in the last eight months or so, I've spent more time with my BFF, the tool, than I have with my actual BFF. It's pretty sad, but, uh, you know, it's how things are, right? Um, it's a little bit about me. I'm Kirk. I'm a security consultant for Rapid7, uh, doing penetration testing. Uh, I like to write open source tools, contribute to open source projects. Uh, one of those is Backhack. Uh, find it on our Moose Dojo GitHub. Uh, it's a, a script to perform application analysis uh, for file system analysis on Android applications uh, for non-rooted devices. That's the key thing there. Uh, I got tired of my wife asking me to root her phone so I could give her unlimited lives and Candy Crush. So I created this app to do that. Um, <laughs> I also blog on the community site and, and also check that out. So we're going to talk about some various things, authentication methods, attacks against authentication. We're going to look at web application uh, authentication because my BFF is a web application brute force tool uh, currently. Uh, there are plans to add to it other protocols and everything as well, so that hopefully will be changing soon. Um, we'll look at some of the different attack tools that are out there for web applications, and we'll talk about my BFF on and how it addresses some of the issues with those other tools. We'll do a demo, and then we'll talk about uh, mitigation for these kinds of attacks. Uh, didn't want to leave the blue team out of this, so I uh, did that. So biometrics is uh, the first authentication method, uh, your fingerprint, your, uh, your retinal scans, uh, voice recognition. Uh, it's been around a long time, but it's recently started getting a lot more uh, use uh, from regular people. Uh, and that's basically, as shown in this picture here, it's the iPhone coming out with Touch ID. Um, every phone now has fingerprint reader makes it nice and easy. And it's going beyond just logging into your phone now. There's apps that are, are using the biometrics as well, which is great. Um, there are flaws with it. One of those is somebody wants to get in your phone and they cut off your fingers, you know, they can get in. Uh, it's, <laughs> there's other ways too. So. Uh, the second thing is a pin. Usually these pins are four digits or more. Uh, ATM is one common way, also your phones. And if you think about it, multi-factor authentication uses a PIN, right? Uh, you have your Google Authenticator, your RSA token. These are refreshing every 60 seconds with a new PIN for you to use. And I, that's, in my opinion, the best place for a PIN to be used. And lastly, the most common username and password. We all use those to log in our computers. We use them to log into websites and all that. So we're going to talk about usernames and passwords because that's the most common. So first thing we need is the usernames, right? So how do we get usernames? That's easy. Uh, LinkedIn, you can scrape for, for targets there. You can use Google searches, um, use any number of tools. And more, more and more I'm seeing on company websites uh, listing of all their users. I don't know why that is. Uh, companies seem to think it's not a big risk. Uh, it just makes my job easy. So I'll go there, scrape it, and have a full directory listing. And uh, if, if nothing else, go into timing attacks against OWA or other services uh, using census data. makes it nice and easy to gather those usernames. So we, we want the passwords, right? So how do we get passwords? Well, there's different techniques, right? We have brute force. Uh, brute force is just as many user or as many passwords against the username as possible. Uh, that could be using a dictionary, could be using clear brute force, trying every possible combination. We also have the inverse of that, which is password spraying. That's uh, using a, a lot of usernames but one password, uh, which is how uh, my BFF goes about it. 
And de determining which one to use kind of determines if it's an off offline or an online attack. Uh, online, if you have a service that you're uh, that's looking up against the database, then uh, in real time, then that's an online service. And a web application is one of those things, so is Active Directory, anything else like that. Um, most of these have a, a, a account lockout policy, so we want to be careful uh, how quickly we attack. So we don't want to use brute force, we want to use password spraying, and we want to limit that to whatever the lockout policy is to prevent lockouts, because we want access, not to denial of service. Uh, for offline, we need something to uh, to guess against, and, and that's a hash, right? So the mathematical representation of that password, and uh, once we have that, then we can use brute force against that all day long, and there's no account lock out there. So moving on to web application login forms, they're very basic, very simple. There's three primary places here. There's a username field, a password field, and a submit button. Now, those username and password fields could be named anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be username and password. Uh, that can all change. The submit button could change what it's called, um, but they all basically have the same thing. Uh, some web application forms have hidden fields, so sometimes we have to find those as well. And we have different tools for guessing against these web applications. Uh, Burp Suite, one of my favorite tools to use. Uh, you get to see that traffic, you proxy it through, and you can decide, okay, this is the username field, this is the password field, I want to run an attack, and then look at that, uh, the results afterwards. There are one-off scripts for specific applications, so uh, some that I've used are for Citrix or others, um, just to attempt against that. But it's very specific to that application only. And uh, with, especially with Citrix, it seems like every couple of years they change how everything's written, and you have to have a new script. So um, one script you have for the Citrix built in 2010 isn't going to work in 2016, which can be a pain. Um, and lastly, there's my BFF, which I wrote. So what is my BFF? It's a brute force framework. Um, it's modular, it's intelligent, and it goes beyond just uh, regular brute forcing. Um, so we have a couple of different modules right now, and it's easily extensible. You just add new modules, and, uh, and it just works. Um, the intelligence. You just point it at a URL, give it a username and a password, or a user file and a password file, and it goes to town, figures out which application it is, it does its guessing, responds if it's valid or not. And I got kind of tired of just using scripts or anything that just tells me if it's valid or not, and I wanted to go a little further. Um, and so it does that. Uh, and I'll get into what that means in a little bit. So each module is going to have a few different parts. First thing is a fingerprint. I need to know how to know what that, uh, which module to run. So I'll look at the uh, the the results from the initial request. Look for a certain string. Look for a cookie value. Something that's going to differentiate that application from another. Next, I'm going to build my payload. How do we authenticate? That's the username and password. Um, we're going to, sometimes you'll see J underscore username, sometimes you'll see username, sometimes you'll see user, whatever those, uh, the web developer decided to name things, we're going to build that payload so it, we can authenticate properly. Next thing we're going to do is, is actually try to connect. Um, and this is where every script out there, this is what they do. It give, tells you if it's valid or invalid, right? And lastly, with my BFF, we, we want to do something cool. Um, and so what does that mean? Well, each module is going to do something different um, based on what application that is. So some of these are post uh, authentication, some are pre-authentication. Um, and to kind of describe this, the reason I created my BFF, I was on a test back in February, an external test, gathered usernames, was all set to password guess. Used my favorite password guessing uh, password, which was the season in year, right? Had 15 accounts out of the, the ones that I had that you were using that. Awesome. Found a Citrix login portal. 
I love Citrix because I can usually escape it pretty easily. So log in with the first username and password combination, and it tells me that there's no applications available to the user. Well, that sucks, so try the second one. Same message. The third one. The fourth one. The fifth one. The sixth one. By this time, I'm saying this is ridiculous. There's got to be an easier way. So I scripted it out and ran it through all 15, and all 15 had no applications. So I decided to rerun it with my second favorite password to use. It's the company name, 1234, um, or some sort of variation of that. I ended up getting one, and it, it told me that there were some applications available to the user. Great. Log into Citrix, escape the environment, get internal access, compromise the entire domain, game over. So I thought, why can't we do this with other applications? Why can't we go beyond just a valid and get more information? So I started creating modules uh, for Outlook, Web Access, and Office 365. We're going to parse the emails. We're going to look for sensitive information in those. We're also going to dump out all the contacts so we can use those in other attacks. Um, for Citrix, like I said, we, list the, we now list the available apps instead of just telling you that there are some. Uh, which is nice, so I can determine if I want to go after the user that has uh, Internet Explorer or if I want to go after the one with the Windows 7 desktop. Um, for Juniper portals, we actually do something pre-authentication. That's the multi-factor bypass. Uh, so by changing the URL, sometimes you can find one that doesn't require multi-factor, and that's great. So uh, we'll do that. We'll try to find that one. We'll do password guessing against there. And so each one's different that way. So go into a quick demo. Uh, we'll look at two of the modules and how they work, and you can see the output and, and how all that is. So the first one here, um, we, it's very simple. You just my BFF. Um, you're going to pass in the host, so dash dash host. The host is going to include the protocol, which is in this case HTTPS. You're going to either pass the host name or an IP address. Uh, if it requires a separate port, if it's running on a different port, you could pass that in as well. Um, the capital U is for a username file. If you want a single username, it's a, a lowercase u. The lowercase p is for a password. The capital P will be for a password file. Now, in this case, the fingerprinting fails because it's a small business server. Um, the small business server default web page actually goes to a separate page than what I want, which is the OWA. So if we run it again, but this time we're going to pass in the, the dash dash v host, so for virtual hosting, and OWA, and we run it. Now we'll see it finds that it's in Office 365 or Office Web Ac or OWA server. When we start trying some of the password guessing, we find that user three is is successful with my favorite password, Spring 2016, in this case. Uh, we look for the sensitive e emails, and we find that there are some about password helps. And we also notice that uh, DA3 here was also using Spring 2016, which is nice for us. Now we have domain admin. Um, and we'll clear the screen here, and I'll show you. It also does uh, save off those contacts into the temp directory contacts and then the username. And so now you can use those in other attacks if you want. The uh, the second uh, run I'm going to do is this is for an application called HP SiteScope. It's a application that manages other network devices and systems uh, through a web, access, uh, web app. Now, last year I found a zero day in that that gave me command um, uh, command injection and one of the tools and created a uh, Metasploit module and everything for that as well. So what we'll do is here is it's running on port 8080. So we'll type in the same thing, the host. We'll give it the port 8080 here. Um, we'll just give it a single username and a single password to, to guess here. Um, by default, the application came with no authentication, which was nice when I was on the test and found it. Um, and once we run this, 
and it finds it, it'll actually build a RC file for Metasploit, and it'll, and it'll run that module. Loads that up, and runs the exploit, and now we have a interpreter session. Uh, we run get UID, and we'll see that's running a system. So, uh, so that's the basic interface. We have multiple modules. You can check all those out. Um, the development is open source on our Rapid7 GitHub page. Uh, so if you'd like to contribute, uh, that'd be great. Plan to add more modules to it. Um, going beyond just the web applications, I'd like to get into other protocols. I actually have some of those written out, um, and those will be added later. Um, working on simplifying some of the module creation, making it a little more intelligent, things like that. Um, and whatever other ideas people may have, I'd, be, I'd love to hear those. Um, so check that out. So when there's password attacks, uh, how do we mitigate that? Um, first thing, we need to detect it. We need to know if somebody's trying. Um, and that could be against a single account. It could be against a slew of accounts. So you want to be able to monitor for that so you can take action. Next thing, you want multi-factor authentication. That's going to make it much harder. Um, just don't uh, use the Juniper uh, bypass and, and have uh, kind of a back door in there, because otherwise we'll find it. And lastly, use strong passphrases. Uh, don't use spring 2016 or now it's fall, so don't use fall 2016. Um, use something longer, more complex, and more difficult. Um, some of the things that are being added to my BFF uh, that I don't have a sl uh, slide for, but uh, we're doing proxy support, so you can actually route your attacks through multiple proxies or single proxies, so you can hide where you're coming from. Uh, we have a demo mode, um, or I call it dummy mode, which uh, will just do password guessing. It won't do that extra something cool um, if you don't need that. We have uh, timing uh, changes, so when you do a password file, um, we go through all the users with the first password, then we go to the second password, and then the third, so it's more of a spray. Um, the timing is actually going to, after the first one's done, wait a certain amount of time and help you avoid that account lockout. So if you know that account lockout, um, you'll be able to kind of tailor that. Um, and uh, there's some other stuff coming out too, so hopefully you guys will check that out. This is my contact information, GitHub where you can get it. Um, if anybody has any questions, be happy to take those. No? Thank you.